Recently I've been looking into ley lines and the earth's grid and I came across some fantastic patterns inside of stadiums and fields which I believe answer the questions to how they are harnessing the energy from stadiums. Firstly to explore this we need to explore Michelle Gibson's circuit board earth theory and look at the circuit board earth and what it may represent to see what the stadiums and the pitches may be doing in terms of harnessing energy for the circuit itself. We will look into meanings, definitions and symbols to see if the stadiums and pitches represent or actually are batteries on the grid system itself, powering something larger that we are unaware of, the positive and negative forces of the home and away sides cheering and creating tension what are we really doing at football matches and then finally we'll look at the game in a philosophical manner and what hidden truths are hidden in football and other games to stadiums and pitches not only representing the universe and life itself but also being harnessed as a battery I've covered this before but look at the noticeable similarities between cities and circuit boards and once you see it, you can't unsee it. You don't know if you're looking at a city or a circuit board. So you see the layout of the circuit board here. But that could easily be a blueprint for a city. Circuit board. City. Circuit board. City. I'm not going to even tell you because you don't know which one. <laughs> and that's the point. And this is where the term grid comes from. Like off the grid, on the grid, computer grid. It's like this energy known as God is a master coder. I wonder. Okay, so I've spoken about Nikola Tesla before and how he was able to provide humanity with electricity. Haters will say otherwise. If you know, you know. But how was he able to do this? Well, let's break this down in simple terms. Basic Physics 101. Alright, so our reality is powered by the EMF, right? So that means there is this readily available omnipresent electricity that we shouldn't be paying for. But yeah, any given time you can tap into it um, and get you some electricity. Buildings all around here that I told in class last night, they're ours, they belong to us. They're ancient, these buildings. There's a whole city underneath this city. They went and burned all the major cities, the major energy centers. Our ancestors set up these energy centers that we call Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Atlanta, Detroit, right? Chicago, Miami, Phoenix, Los Angeles, they are energy centers. They're not where they are in huge, large cities just because of some coincidence. There's energy and power in these places. London, Rio de Janeiro, all right? And, and by the way, we're going to... The extent of these buildings around the world, just so you can see how many countries they are in, and really when you look at the slideshow that he created, they all look like they're the same culture. I mean, honestly, half of them look like they're the same building. They all look like they come from the same city or the same country, and they're not. These are buildings from all around the world, and they didn't just do this because they liked the Roman style or because they were settled by Roman people. These types of buildings are in China, they're in Kenya, they're in Taiwan, they're in... I think we are being told in our everyday language what the function was of specific infrastructure on the earth, which was arranged as a circuit board for the once free energy generating electromagnetic grid system of the ancient advanced civilization all over the surface of the earth, and which I believe existed up until recent times. We are still using much of the enduring and sophisticated infrastructure of this advanced civilization in the present day. Ley lines are straight alignments drawn between various historical structures and prominent landmarks. The idea was developed in early 20th century Europe with the ley line believers arguing that these alignments were recognised by ancient societies that deliberately erected structures on top of them. The sport of racing uses the word circuit in the following ways the course over which races are won, the number of times the racers go around the track, 
an established itinerary of racing events involving public performance. And in bicycle racing, a circuit race is a mass start road cycle race that consists of several laps of a closed circuit, where the length of the lap is slightly longer each time. Electrical circuit definitions include a closed path in which electrons from a voltage or current source flow, and includes devices that give energy to the charged particles the current is comprised of, such as batteries and generators. Devices that use current, like lamps, electric motors, and computers, and the connecting wires or transmission lines. An electronic circuit is a complete course of conductors through which current can travel. So this is how it begun, looking at a battery, realizing and obviously knowing that the negatives at the bottom and the positives at the top, visualizing a ladder climbing between the positive and the negative at the bottom, which would represent the nine realms, us being the middle realm, which would be the perfect balance between positive and negative duality. And then when I turn the battery, it gave me the realization that pitches and stadiums could be harnessing this type of technology. When I started to draw the lines from side to side, corner to corner, following basic geometry, it created a natural pattern of pyramids, which space between nine lines within a pyramid, the seven in the middle to me representing the spectrum of the rainbow, and also the nine on each side, creating a positive and negative vortex, as you can see, highlighted by the blue and red. We also know magnets to work in this way with a positive and a negative spectrum. And obviously with the home and the away, teams and fans, players and all of the crowd creating a vortex. When I checked off a geometric patterns across other courts like basketball, it was the same. It was the same for cricket. It was the same for tennis. And the list goes on. One of the funny finds was when I was looking at the pattern, I watch a lot of films and I could see the motion picture association of America symbol fitting perfectly inside the grid. Onto stadiums, which obviously house the pitches. I was trying to think of ways which the energy from the grid on the pitch could be harnessed through the stadium. And then looking at the stadium layout, I could see obvious spots where VIPs sat. So I formated a design which the energy potentially could come from the pitch through the stadium harnessed into a particular area. Obviously, I'm not sure if it's this design at all. The batteries have outlets. And if the stadium wasn't powering itself or people within it to harness them, it would be powering something on the outside. But a theory I have come across is that the energy which is created within the stadium through the matches is then amplified to the surrounding areas of potentially up to hundreds of miles, whether that being positive or negative energy. I'm suggesting to you that stadiums and pitches are being harnessed as some type of battery, which I know has been suggested before, but in terms of the pattern on the pitch and how they're doing it hasn't yet been found. We need to look further into the geometry and the layout of the grid to see what signal or magic circle, circuit or battery they are formulating and for what reason. Wouldn't it stand to reason that those behind the reset when setting up the new world would take advantage of the super science of the different types of circuits in the Earth's grid system in order to harness their inherent power to enhance performance at sporting events? and in the process, making lots of money at highly charged, prestigious gaming and betting venues. In regards to similar configurations found in different cities, in Cincinnati, Ohio, the city's professional sports stadiums are downtown next to the Ohio River. And interestingly, they are situated on the river exactly like they are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
Same seemed to be true in London and surrounding areas. Then looking into Olympic stadiums, the same pattern seemed to be formed. The four triangles, as you can see, the seven or nine rays forming through the middle, and then the positive and negative, each represented by nine lines running around the pattern, equaling 18 in total. We are told that Glasgow has the third oldest underground rail system in the world, opening on December 14th of 1896. The 15 stations of the subway are distributed over a 10 kilometer or six mile circuit of the West End and city center of Glasgow, with eight stations to the north of the River Clyde and seven to the south. There are two lines, an outer circle running clockwise and an inner circle running counterclockwise. This graphic came up when I searched for a particle accelerator diagram showing counter rotating beams and a circular accelerator in comparison with the Glasgow subway's outer and inner ring running in opposite directions from each other. I definitely think there is more going on with these underground rail systems than anything we've ever been told about them. Keeping that shape in mind, the UFC octagon sprang to mind. Obviously, in sports, there's individual and team, and mostly I'm looking at team sports. But individual sports such as the UFC and snooker, Paul, all would follow the same geometry. When looking at the UFC octagon, I could start to see the Maltese cross, the Templars cross, stand out in the middle of the pattern which would obviously be formed in the other patterns as well, but stood more so out in the octagon. Putting the patterns over, they did match up pretty well. So all this does is prove that it exists in every sport, individual or team, and doesn't necessarily matter of shape, octagon, square, rectangle, as the particle accelerator would fit into a circle, octagon or square anyway. Interestingly, the octagon does pull out into a dual torus. Cathedral rose windows look like the cymatic patterns of musical notes. With the massive organ pipes surrounding the cathedral rose window, it appears as though this was a musical system designed to generate waves of specific frequencies, like solfeggio frequencies, through this type of window. Solfeggio frequencies make up the ancient six-tone scale used in sacred music, like, for example, Gregorian chants and Tibetan singing bowls. Each solfeggio tone is a frequency that can be used to balance one's energy and keep one's body, mind, and spirit in harmony. What was the purpose of these massive bell towers reaching up to the clouds for the original civilization? Were these tall generators of healing and harmonious frequencies for the benefit and balance of all of creation? Looking at the words and definitions, all sports take place on a playing field or a sports field. The word field reminds me of energy field or electromagnetic field. Looking at a football field, basketball court or any other sports field, we can see how it creates positive and negative energy and itself could become a field. A pitch which a game takes place on reminds me of the pitches in the sound which Michelle was talking about previously. The quality of sound governed by the rate of vibration producing it, the degree of highness or lowness of tone. Pitch. So what is the objective or sport or of the game? Sport generally pertains to any form of competitive physical activity or game. But in particular, because I'm obviously English, I'm going to be looking at the sport football and what the aims of that game may be. Obviously in football consists of 11 players on each team within a certain dimension, within a pitch. And the aim of the game within 90 minutes is to score as many goals as you can, more than the other team to beat them, in a nutshell. You know guys, there's a lot I could go through here, the referee, how he's the, you know, the enforcer of the laws of the game. We could look at the balls um, and the dimensions of the balls and what they're made of and how similar they are to Earth and all the geometrical sacred shapes within them. 
and where board games first came from and how it's all related to the voyages of Christopher Columbus and the Mesopotamian America and the four first board games were to do with sacrifices um, we could look at formations um, and the different geometrical patterns and shapes you can make on the different teams depending on the formation they're using So the objective of any sport is to score a goal of some sort. The goal is defined as between a pair of posts linked by a crossbar, typically a net between forming a space into over which a ball has to be sent in order to score. Looking at the definitions, which I won't go into too deeply, of a bar or a crossbar, they do have other meanings. A crossbar can be identified as a beam, a gate or a barrier. And in law you have to pass the bar. A post meaning an entrance to a prominent place. And also, it reminded me of a post box, which we post our mail in. And outside of the goals is obviously a box. Or on top of the hoop around the net is the box is on the backboard. Bear in mind, the definition and the objective of the game is to score a goal or a hoop. We'll look at what Sanguru has to say about this later. Also, bearing in mind that the definition of a bar was a gate. My thought process started to move on to what type of energy is being used on a pitch, which is kinetic energy. Once I started to search the term kinetic energy related to football, startling developments occurred. steps is, is lighting up the corridor so we'll, we'll go down the whole length of it I'll try and give you guys a good view of what's going on so the more you walk the more the lights come on there right in the heart of uh, terminal 3 we've got here on the side the Burberry store um... it was starting to discover the amount of places where this technology is in Heathrow Birmingham even in schools, USA, Japan, all over the world. Same pattern I'd found on the football fields exists in a type of kinetic technology which harnesses the energy into electricity. I'm 100% sure this already takes place in nature and they've just stolen the technology. If you can put two and two together, you can surely see how this could already be taking place on football field with the natural geometry and the pattern that I've found. And you can obviously see four pyramids, four triangles. If you were to imagine pulling those triangles up from the top in the middle of the centre of the pit, you would actually form a pyramid. When imagining the pyramid and then seeing the stadium around the pyramid as well, straight away Stargate came to mind. As we discovered with the definition of a bar, could the pitch, the stadium and the spectators combine together all be acting as some form of gate? You know, just looking at the cover of Stargate, the circle surrounding the top you can see as a particle accelerator of the stadium which sits upon the pitch. Just squash the pyramid down from the top and it would easily form the pitch and the four triangles that I've shown you. The next video was sent to me by a friend, Adam. I can't really make top and tail of the video, it's so complex. But ultimately, one of the patterns matches the design on the pitch. And it also reminds me of Spider-Man. As we know, films hide so much. 
but even sacred geometry and potentially the keys to Stargates are being hidden within movies. Everything the characters in Marvel have the potential to do is a potentiality in science. One of the other things that stuck out to me on the diagram was the 369. Obviously if you add 3, 6 and 9 together it would sum to 18. And if you were to divide 18 by 2 it would bring down to 9. And Tester said the keys to the universe were 3, 6, 9. Within a football match you've got the 18 yard box, the 9 yard box. The pattern that I found is of, of 18 lines, 9 on each side. What is it telling us? Finally if we take a spiritual approach to the grids to see what they could mean in a universal manner. Back to Sanguru to tell us what it might mean to score a goal. 114 chakras, there are seven which we recognize as seven dimensions. Out of this, six are within the body, one just outside the physical body. So if you employ these 112 methods, you will handle the six chakras. The seventh one you cannot handle. There are 112 ways in which you can at, uh, attain to a chakra which we refer to as Agna. But from Agna to Sahasrara, there is no way. There is no way to do it. You just have to jump into an abyss. So, the journey from the Muladhara to Agna, there are 112 ways to get there. But from there to there, there is no way. It is just one jump that can happen in trust, in devotion or in madness, choice is yours. Because of my background with spirituality, religion and scripture, when I was applying the pattern to the pictures, I could naturally see the tree of life and the nine realms, also the nine planets, which would ultimately represent the journey from the keeper to the opposition's goal of rising up the pitch to score the goal of rising up the Colladini ladder, rising up the tree of life, rising up the realms to the top, all with its dual purpose, rising the energy to the top. Then with my background in alchemy, I could see the basic alchemic symbols sitting up on the pitch naturally, and then the flame reminded me of an old game. It's right there, in plain sight, isn't it? The hoops representing life and death. The ball representing terror. The symbols for nature. Air, fire, water, all the alchemy in our faces. Then we move on to looking at the brain, with the left and right hemispheres. Often represented as red and blue, just like my diagram. Could be seen as yin yang, the positive and negative. And then relating this to golf courses, seeing the first part of the golf course is the nine holes line up on one side and the further nine holes line up on the other side. And then relating this back to the other pattern that we found on the football fields of the nine lines on each side of the pattern, it matches again. The nine lines are still represented either side, representing the nine and eighteen. A friend I've been working closely with Adam kindly pointed out the left and right hemispheres and the pattern there on the golf courses and also pointed out the tournament that is hosted the Masters. Obviously in alchemy one pushes to master the mind, body and soul and when doing so becomes a master of himself or a master of the universe. And finally we move on to look at the game and any sport as a representation as life itself through metaphors. The chessboard consists of 64 squares, alternative black and white symbolises the floor of the house of mysteries. Upon this field of existence or thought move a number of strangely card figures each according to the fixed law. I'm not going to say all this. The White King, the Black King, and upon the plains of the cosmos, the great war between light and darkness is fought through all the ages. Of the philosophical constitution of man, the kings represent the spirit, 
the queen's the mind, the bishop's the emotions, the knight's vitality, the castles or rocks the physical body, the pieces upon the king's side are positive and those upon the queen's are negative, the pawns are sensory impulses and perceptive facilities, the eight parts of the soul, the white king and his suite symbolise the self and his vehicles, the king, not the self, the false ego and his legion, the game of chess thus sets forth the eternal struggle of each part of man's compound nature against the shadow of itself. The nature of each chessman is revealed by the way in which it moves. Geometry is key for their interpretation. For example, the castle the body moves on the square, the bishop the emotion moves on the slant, the king being the spirit cannot be captured, but loses the battle when surrounded that it cannot escape. Manly P. Hall. I'm not going to read all this metaphor but it starts with comparing ourselves to the football field. At times it can be empty, with nothing happening on it. At other times it can be exciting and full of joy. Have a rowdy crowd on the football field, get abuse or be angry. Sometimes lots of people attend, sometimes it's empty. Different comments, judgments from the supporting and supposing teams. The football field doesn't care who is winning or losing or what teams are playing. The field is a platform on which the game is played. The players and the crowds change, while the football field remains the same. In the same way, we are not the game played in our minds. We are the platform for the game and the witness of the game played in it. The players and the crowd represent your thoughts and feelings, and you are like the football field. The most important aspect is that football field does not change, but the atmosphere and experience change constantly. Similarly, like the universe or the space in which life takes place does not change, but the players and the teams, the strategies do. The arena of life in which history has took place is a representation of the pitch. So what have we discovered? We've discovered the pattern and geometry that they're using to harness the football fields and other stadiums as some form of battery or the other terms that we've discovered as a gate of some sort. We've also learnt the spiritual meanings behind the games which can relate to man himself, the world, the universe, or the creation itself.